So number one, God's word is eternal uh, and it existed before uh, languages, it existed before uh, writing. But number two, this, this word was, was spoken before it was written. So the Bible existed, the, the scriptures existed in a verbal form before they existed in written form. And we'll just go back to Titus there. Where we read, it says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, but hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Saviour. So God didn't say here in Titus that he has manifested his word through writing. He manifested his word through preaching. And what I'm trying to get at here is this emphasis on the original writings. The emphasis is not on the original writings. The emphasis should be on what is the inspired word that existed before the world began that was manifested through preaching, which we have recorded for us in the writings of Scripture. But let me, let me show you this principle all throughout the Bible. Uh, 2 Samuel 23, verse 2. Oh, that's not 2 Samuel. Samuel 23. There we go. Verse 2. This is David speaking here. David, the son of Jesse, said, and the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel said, the spirit of the Lord spake by me and his word was in my tongue. So David didn't say the spirit of the Lord moved me and his word was in my pen. He said the spirit of the Lord spake by me and his word was in my tongue. Uh, look at uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah. One, verse 9, so this is Jeremiah now. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Uh, so again, the word is uh, spoken primarily, um, and those spoken words were written down. Now we see here in Numbers 23, verse 12, now this is Balaam uh, talking here, and obviously Balaam is not, was not a righteous prophet at all, but it's interesting that he says here in verse 12, and he answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak that which the Lord hath put in my mouth? And we'll blow through a couple of these other verses. Look at this verse in Psalm 45 verse 1. My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. Again, speech. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Now, isn't that interesting that he's saying that his tongue is like God's pen. So as God is writing out these words, David speaks them. And it's, it's, it's just interesting because we often use the analogy of you know, how can, you know, they say men pen down God's word, therefore it can, be, it can have errors. And we say, well, you know, when you write an essay, are you writing the essay or is the pen writing the essay? Well, the, pen, the pen's not writing the essay. You're writing the essay. You're just using the pen to write the essay. And it's almost like God is saying here, you know, is the man, is the man speaking or is God speaking? Well, God is actually using man as his pen to speak the words of God. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Uh, let's look at this uh, verse in Luke. This is, uh, you know, when Zacharias, I believe it's just after... Uh, the child, John the Baptist, is born and then Zacharias is given back his speech because he was, it was taken away because he didn't believe the angel. It says here in verse 67, And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. So again, you see, you see there that the word was spoken uh, by prophets. Hebrews 1. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in, times, in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these day, last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. So you see there that the Bible is spoken. And the last one that we'll go to is uh, 2 Peter. 2 Peter 1. Let's read from verse 13. Yea, I think it meet. So it's, it's suitable. 
as long as, as I am in this tabernacle, so he's referring to his body as a, as a, as a tent, a tabernacle, to stir up, stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. So he's saying, I'm going to die soon, as Jesus Christ has revealed to me. I'm going to put off my tabernacle. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in, in remembrance. And just note that verse, because I'm going to come back to it a bit later. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. What is he referring to there? It's when uh, 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 Peter, James and John went up with Jesus Christ into the mount of transfiguration. And remember, Jesus was transfigured before them. And he's saying, you know, we didn't follow cunningly devised fables. We were, verse 16, eyewitnesses of his majesty. We saw him get transfigured and we heard the voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. So let's stop there. I mean, you think what, you know, he, they, they were there in the mountain. They saw with their own eyes. They heard with their own ears. And you start to think, what could be more sure than your own experience? What could be more sure than something you see with your own eyes? And, you know, it reminds me of the Mormons that came and knocked on my door yesterday. And I asked them both, you know, why did you accept... Um, the Book of Mormon as the Word of God. And both of them said, you know, they prayed and they prayed and they prayed about it and they just had that feeling, you know, that burning in the bosom. They believe the Holy Ghost revealed it to them and now they just know that the Book of Mormon is the Word of God. What are they saying? They're basing their belief on how they feel. They're basing their belief on experience. And a lot of Pentecostals, a lot of people in, in, in a lot of churches these days, that's what they do. They'll say, I, you know, I spoke in tongues. I experienced this. I felt that God was there. And they, and they basically basing their, their truth, their standard of truth on what they experienced. But what do we learn from the Bible? The Bible says here that they had that experience. They were in the holy mount. They heard the voice from heaven. But what do they say in verse 19? We have also a more sure word of prophecy. So something even more sure than their own experience is the scriptures, is, is the Bible. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day, um, day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. It's not a secret. And look at this. And this is what I was getting to. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. It didn't come because men wanted it to come across, uh, come to us. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So we see there that that's how we got the scriptures. The scriptures were given to us by God speaking through man. So a lot of people might have the objection, well, you know, Man spoke God's word, so man can corrupt God's word. Well, that's not true, because what we see in the Bible is it wasn't actually man speaking what man wanted to speak. It was God speaking through man. Remember what David said? My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. God, you know, even though we are not Calvinist at all, we don't believe God controls everything that happens on this earth. But when he wants to, he can. And when it comes to delivering copying and translating and preserving his word, I believe that he doesn't leave that up to chance. He makes sure, because he loves us. He wants us to have his word, so he's not going to let man corrupt it. 